Are you looking for better ways to create consistent characters inside of Midjourney? Well, in this video, I have a few things that you might want to know about. First, are you frustrated with that same look from your character in each generation? Well, there is something you can do to solve that issue. And it involves using more than one image as a character reference. We actually want to include multiple image links in our prompt, but we are going to need to generate those different looks before we do that. And it can be as simple as this. You're just going to prompt for multiple expressions, candid photos of, dash dash c ref and then your image link to your character. Do you remember Eliza? That's who we're going to be focusing on today. If you find that isn't exactly working, you can try some different parameters like lowering the stylized value. Here I lowered it to dash dash s60, but you could also try style raw. Let me show you some more examples. Here I also tried chaos 6 and look at these results. I think number one is great. In this prompt I tried stylized 200 chaos 6 and these are the results. I love number two. Basically you can work with anything that gives you multiple pictures from different angles and using different expressions. That's what we want so that when we use character reference, Midjourney has a chance to pull from a few different sources rather than just the same face over and over again. And let me just point out I wouldn't use number one here. I don't think having a character's mouth open is really what you'd want. However, if that is something you'd want, maybe you would use that as a character reference. Completely up to you. And a big tip I have for you is to lower the character weight. Dash dash CW and then a value between zero and 100. I recommend lowering it all the way to zero when you're trying to develop these multiple expressions because we just want it to focus on the face. I actually really like the results of number three here. This happened to use stylized 200, but we get three distinct pictures. Even one when her eyes are closed, I think that can work. How many expressions should you generate? Well, I think the more the better but you don't need that many. I think maybe between four and six will probably do a very good job for you. But there is an extra step you need to do. You'll need to take these pictures into something like Photoshop, maybe Canva, honestly, any image editor, and you'll need to isolate the individual faces. You're then going to save them as separate pictures and now you can upload them to Discord. That's when we're going to create a new shortcut for our character and we're going to include every solid reference image that we've created so far. You can upload the pictures by pressing this little plus button beside the prompt box, going to upload file, finding them on your computer, and then you have to make sure you hit enter and send them in the chat. You'll need to see the pictures in the chat room. From there, we're gonna set the shortcut by hitting prefer option set into the prompt box. We need to make sure we hit plus one more. That will bring up value, we'll click on that. Now we have two boxes to input information. In value is where we're going to put our image links. So we can actually just click on them and drag them into the value box. Make sure you hit space, take the next one, drag it into the box, hit space, grab the next one, hit space, keep doing that. And then we need to click on option over here. And this is where we're going to put the name of our shortcut. We're going to choose something that will expand into all of those image links. I'm going to go with Eliza 2. Keep it simple like that, right? Now, I will say that some people have been mentioning that we should be putting dash dash c ref into our shortcut. I personally don't think you'll want to do that for two reasons. The first reason is that you wouldn't be able to use those image links for anything other than a character reference if c ref appears in your shortcut. Maybe you'd want to use them as image prompts, maybe style reference, I don't know. Either way, you wouldn't be able to if it has C ref in the shortcut. The other reason you don't want to add C ref in your shortcut is because you wouldn't be able to add more than one character reference in your prompt. I'll get to why that's important later in the video. I know I just showed you one way that you could get different expressions and looks for your character, but honestly, you can just specify the new look you want in your prompt. So rather than prompting for multiple expressions, we can literally just do a side profile portrait of dash dash C ref and then a picture of Eliza. And look how this turns out, I, these are amazing, right? You could try stylized 400, you could lower the stylized value. It really doesn't matter, but specifying the look seems to work well. Then you can simply upscale the images you like and include those in your shortcut. Two ways of doing it. Let me show you the results and why this whole process is actually important. First, here's the prompt, Viking warrior and then character referencing Eliza. And these are the results. Honestly, they don't even look that good. They don't really look that much like her at all. Maybe a number one, I'll say that. But then look at this, Viking Warrior, C ref with all of those different image links of Eliza. And look at these, these are awesome. We're getting some different looks, I think. And even though I didn't change the character weight, we're not getting that Victorian look because we sort of diluted the look of Eliza by including multiple images of her. 
I think that's why it's important. You could even try this for a Studio Ghibli animated woman, and we're getting some different looks here. I like number one that she's smiling. Or maybe you wanna try that same thing, but also lower the character weight. You'll get even more varied images, but with your character's face. Now let's talk about generating multiple characters in a scene. Is it possible? No, it's not. I've gotten a lot of questions about this and it won't work because the bot will just create some sort of combination of both your characters. Like here, you'll see Kelly and Eliza. And when I put both of those pictures as a character reference, this is what we get. As you can see, it's almost like a perfect blend between those characters. Even though I specified two women pirates and I included two different characters in my reference links, it's still going to combine them. But I'm telling you about this because there is a trick. There is a way to get multiple characters in a scene. Let me show you. What you're going to do is go down to very region and we're going to inpaint the characters we want into the scene. So this is how you would do it. We can use the square and we'll just select the face of one of the characters. Then we'll delete those character links from our prompts and now we'll just input the links to the characters we want. And when we hit enter, we'll get something like these. Now I don't know if they all worked, but number one looks pretty good. Like I think that's much more reminiscent of Eliza. And then from here, we're gonna do the exact same thing with the other character. So we go to very region, only this time we select her face on the right. We'll go down and erase this image link. And I would type dash dash Kelly to signal the shortcut for that character. When we hit enter, these are the results we get. And look at, the, isn't that amazing? So there is no way to get multiple characters in the same scene unless you do this exact workflow. Like, look at that. We have Eliza and we have Kelly. Now, does it completely look like them? I don't know, maybe not, but these people also don't exist, so maybe it's better than nothing. This technique is also going to work for practically any scene, which is why I think you can prompt for whatever you want. And then after, go into in painting, vary by region, select their faces, and input the characters you were actually looking for. Like here we have a portrait of a pirate queen. I went to vary by region, I selected her head, I changed the link in the prompt, and then look at that, there's Kelly. Isn't isn't that crazy? Like, I think that worked out so well. Way better than just trying to reference that character in the prompt, right? If you've made it this far through the lesson and you're new here, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Nolan and I am trying my best to make learning AI like this as easy as possible. If my instructions are a little fast for you here, you might be interested in my Midjourney beginner course. I've created detailed lessons on every single Midjourney feature and I cover all of them in the exact same format. I tell you what the feature is and why it's important, then I tell you when you should use it and some ways that you can master it. Look, if you're comfortable using Midjourney and you've been following along since the tech was introduced, this course might not be for you, and that's okay. But if you're fascinated by AI art, yet a little overwhelmed with where to start, I think my course might help you a lot. I take you through everything from setting up on Discord to exploring art styles and aesthetics. All videos are pre-recorded and you can go through each lesson at your own pace. Don't worry about falling behind either, you'll have access to the course forever and I'll continue to update it as Midjourney adds new features. In fact, I have a few new lessons already planned. Not to mention that if you enroll in the course, you get access to every prompt pack I've ever created. That's 284 prompts and 124 ad-lib prompt templates included at no extra cost. And I want to be transparent. The price of this course is going to increase as I continue to update it. So if you're interested, consider joining now if you want the best possible deal. Okay, back to the tips and tricks. Earlier I mentioned something about including two character references and why it might be important. Well, take a look at this, which might be like the coolest discovery ever. And I have to give credit to Richard Cote, who sent me an Instagram message telling me to try this. The trick is that you can actually use color as a character reference, and the results are kind of amazing. You could even use textures, like here, a knight in blue armor, dash dash C ref, and then this link, and check out what this link is. It's just the color of sky blue. Isn't that wild? I used a turquoise color in this one, and a darker blue in this one. Look how well that turns out. And don't worry, those prompts are kind of bad, I'll be honest, they're very simple. But this is a proof of concept. You can use color as a character reference, and Midjourney is smart enough to insert those colors into the scene. Just crazy stuff. I actually recommend setting these colors as shortcuts. It'll just be way easier for you. So you would go into prefer option set, set your option, the name of your shortcut. I'm going with sky blue for this one. We'll hit plus one more, click on value, and then we can drag our sky blue color 
right there. Now, when we hit enter, dash dash sky blue is going to trigger that specific color. I mentioned that this also works with texture. Like look at these, a knight in granite armor. <laughs> these are hilarious. Maybe the pictures aren't the best, but this was my first time trying it. I just wanted to see if it worked. Please let me know any tricks you find along the way. And I mentioned granite armor here, but you don't really have to do that. I mean, I got these by just including a knight in armor. However, I will say that including some sort of reference in your prompt will help with the character reference. As in a knight in armor, the armor is granite, and then you include a character reference of that granite texture. Specifying it in your prompt is probably going to help overall. And then take a look at these. We're including two colors at the same time, and it works. A wide angle action scene shot of two knights fighting. The knight on the left is wearing blue armor, the knight on the right is wearing red armor. Dash dash C ref and then the link to blue and a link to red. Look at this, isn't that incredible? Doesn't that just blow your mind and open up so many more possibilities? Granted, the pictures aren't the best, but just using that prompt, it knew to put that specific color blue on the knight on the left and that specific red, scarlet red, on the night on the right. And let me show you what I did here and why your prompt might not matter that much. I don't know, you can let me know what you think. Cinematic wide angle action scene shot of two knights fighting. The knight on the left is wearing blue armor. The knight on the right is wearing red armor on splash. But instead of the color red, I used a character reference of the color pink. And the character still came out pink even though I used red in the prompt. I guess that's showing you that color reference is pretty strong it can sort of overtake what you write in the prompt. But look at this. I even wrote the knights are wearing different colored armor. I didn't specify anything more than that and it still worked. We have a blue knight with that color blue and a pink knight with that color pink. That's just crazy. And I want to reiterate and make sure you understand. This is why you shouldn't put dash dash C ref in your shortcut, because if you did, both links would not appear. You would not get both colors. Let me show you what I mean really quickly. So if I were gonna set my shortcut for testing blue to dash dash C ref and then the color blue, you think this might save you time. Like, oh, I don't need to type C ref into my prompt anymore. I just need to type my shortcut and it will know to expand into character reference. But if we do this, and then we set up the exact same thing for our pink color, including C ref into the shortcut, and then we prompt it for something like two tennis balls, dash dash test B and dash dash test pink. You think that it will open character reference blue, character reference pink, but when we hit enter, we only get one character reference. Only one link shows up because it can't include two character reference parameters. It can include more than one character reference link, but not parameters, so that's why you shouldn't put character reference in your shortcut. I hope that makes sense. That's a little advanced. Sorry, but you see, because we use blue first, that's what came up and pink didn't even get registered in the prompt. Don't include C ref in your shortcut. Just keep it simple. Now let's say I wrote this prompt here. Eliza in a futuristic raincoat, dash dash C ref, dash dash Eliza one, and then dash dash Turk, which is my code for turquoise. This might work out fine. We're probably gonna see both Eliza and the turquoise. Sort of, right? It definitely included the blue, but watch. If we run that exact same prompt, but lower the character weight down to zero, so it just focuses on Eliza's face, we also might lose the color blue. What I'm trying to say is that when you use colors as a character reference, be careful when you lower the character weight you might lose the color. You gotta watch out for that. I mean, maybe number four worked, but maybe that's just a coincidence because the other three had nothing to do with that turquoise color I put in the prompt. I have two more tips for you actually, and instead of making more videos, I'll just include them all here. I hope you appreciate that. You can combine character reference with style reference. I showed you this in my last video, but the prompt didn't really work out. Well, there is something you can change. You can lower the style weight of the style reference image. By default, it's at 100. You could lower it to maybe dash dash SW20. That could work. And now we're seeing a woman fighting off an alien invasion and it's actually giving us that in the prompt. Having said that, maybe you don't need to lower the style weight and just including some chaos might do the trick. <laughs> this, is, this is just a funny picture. <laughs> I liked it. I thought this was pretty crazy. This is at chaos 50. It's not the best picture ever, but it is cool. Or maybe you want to get super specific with your prompt, like wide shot film still of a woman fighting off an alien invasion, then use a lower style weight of 20 here and try style raw. There's a lot of parameters to play around with. 
you might really like the results. And the last tip I have for you to get really cool pictures of a consistent character is to use a combination of parameters like stylize, chaos, and the weird parameter. Dash dash W space, then a value between zero and 3000. Zero is the default. There is no weird by default on your images. Bumping it up to W340 stylize 200 with the prompt multiple expressions of, and we get something like this. Look how cool that is. Like what an amazing picture. But then take a look at this wide shot of a girl in Atlantis. And look at number two, that is unreal. This is Eliza, by the way, and here I use Stylize 200, Chaos 4, Weird 340. Your whole grid is not going to be good. Three of them might suck, but one of them might be extra unique, and that's that might be important to you. Look how cool that is. I was also really impressed by this, the side profile portrait of character reference Eliza, Style Raw, character weight of 0, Stylize 400, Chaos 5, Weird 300. Just what an amazing picture is that really is there is there any way to describe it other than that now if mid journey still isn't listening to you and you want some troubleshooting tricks you can try you can check out this video right here don't forget about my mid journey beginner course i hope you're doing well take care and i'll see you next time peace